everybody, welcome to the second to last video on how to use the financial functions on your TI-83 and 84 plus calculator. Today we're going to be going over NPV or net present value. Um, in this video, uh, there's some unique steps that you need to take in order to solve for NPV. And um, I have the formula drawn up, as you can see on this screen. Um, right here. This is the formula that will need to be followed when we compute for NPV. And I'm going to go through in detail um, how to do that. <clears throat> so let's look at this. Let's look at this question and then go through it step by step. And then later I'll show on a timeline what exactly is happening. Okay, so the question is Sabre Electronics provides specialty manufacturing services to defense contractors located in Seattle, Washington area. The initial outlay is $3 million, and management estimates that the firm might generate cash flows for years one through five equal to 500,000, 750,000, one and a half million, two million, two million. Um, Sabre uses a 20% discount rate for projects of this type. Is this a good investment opportunity? And the way we know if it's a good investment opportunity or not is if it has a positive number. And so let's let's take a look at what exactly is is happening. So we are initially we are going to, this is at time zero. Oh, wait, get my drawer. This is at year zero, or effectively today. We're saying we're going to give out $3 million with the prospects of gaining um, 500000 Let's draw this. 500,000, 750,000, one and a half, and then two periods of two million. So effectively five periods of positive income. So let's go ahead and map that out on our graph or timeline. So we got one, two, three, four, and we'll say that's the fifth. So that first one, it's 500,000. Next one was, sorry, 750,000. This is one and a half million. Wow. Two million. And then the last one is two million. So what effectively is happening is each, this is your one, two, three, four, and then year five. What effectively is happening is this money is being brought back to time zero for each one of these. It's being brought back to this time period. So it's saying when all of our money is effectively brought back to time zero, what we can future, what we'll make in the future, does that equal a greater amount? than the initial money we invested. And if, if we want a certain percentage, so in this case, we wanted 20%. So it's saying, are we going to be able to make enough money to get this 20% return if we do the 3 million and we get these dollar amounts in the future? So let's go to our calculator and now punch in the numbers and see if we get a positive number. A positive number is going to, like I said, indicate that we, we will want to do this investment. So like always, we're going to go down here and just press on on our calculators. We're going to go up to the apps button right here. Click that, number one, and then we're going to go all the way to number seven. So you can either press number seven on your calculator or toggle down with this arrow button. I'm just going to go push this button all the way and then go and press enter right here. 
Okay, so now we're brought to this point. And this is the formula to solve for NPV is IY or number of um, the discount rate, CF0, our initial outlay, and then the cash flows that we would be getting in return. And then after that is talking about the frequency of how often those cash flows occur, um, the periods per year. Okay, so let's start off with, we know our discount rate or our IYR is going to be 20%. So you type this in as a solid number, not 0 0.20, just 20, 20%. And after everything you do, you always put a comma. So the comma's right here, comma. And our next is gonna be our cash flow at time zero, which are, is our initial outlay, which was $3 million. And you're gonna wanna use this negative, not the subtract negative. If you, if you use the subtract negative, you'll get something, it'll say you have an error. You don't want that. Um, use this negative negative three million okay the next step is we're going to add another comma and now we are going to use a curly bracket which is located right here it's the blue though so what we have to do is hit the second and then the curly bracket all right now we are ready to input our cash flows so a cash flow at time one was 500,000, comma, at two was 750,000, comma, one and a half million, comma, two million, comma, another two million. All right, and then we have to close this uh, series with that curly bracket again. So we go up here to second. And then we went ahead and closed that. Now you have to add another comma. And now we're gonna, oh, We're going to add a comma, and then we're going to start another curly bracket. And now we are dealing with the frequencies or how often these occur. So uh, 500,000 occurs once, 750,000 occurs once, 1.5 million occurs once, and 2 million occurs twice. But for this simplicity, I'm just going to use 1 and 1 just to keep things uncomplicated. So we're going to go one for 500,000 happens once for 750,000 comma each comma in between each one of these and then uh, one and a half million once comma two million once comma and another two million once and then we're going to close this bracket out with the curly bracket so second Boom. Okay. So now we are ready to solve. Um, here we don't have to, to do anything special. We just, since it's already saying this is what you're solving for, we don't need to hit uh, alpha solve or anything. We just simply hit enter down here and we are ready to solve. So in this case, we get a positive number of 573,816 and some change. Um, what this is indicating is that if we were to do this in, uh, investment, it would be a good investment because we would be getting that 20% return that we're looking for and we're making 500 or $573,116. So this would be an investment that we would want.